Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm armed with a few hours to kill and the knowledge I need to perfect Supreme Ghost Lord Bathard's Manor. I'm told that it's possible. I've seen the method demonstrated for the spiders in the basement courtesy of one Cletrimus on his Supreme Ghosting website, which I highly recommend to all of you. And that said, let's get started. Before I really get moving, I would like to address the feedback I received on the first video. The reaction to voiceover commentary was mixed, about half of you liked it and about half of you didn't, so I'm going to keep doing it because it's much, much, much easier for me to do on my end. That said, the one fairly universal criticism was that my voice was a bit too low, so I've cranked up the microphone level and I'm attempting to do a better job modulating my voice, keeping it a little bit higher pitched and louder and hopefully enunciating more clearly. Finally, I'm going to, although I'm doing voiceover commentary, when I'm actually in a mission, I'm going to attempt to minimize talking. I don't know if you've ever done this, but when you're recording a video, you feel a strange sort of pressure to constantly be talking when, in fact, dead air is okay, it lets you listen to the game, so whenever something tense is happening, I'm going to do my best to shut up and keep my talking to a minimum. That said, let's load up where we started. You might notice this is a different file where I speed ran through Keeper's Training, just because I needed a clean start after doing some experimenting in Baffert's. Anyway, let's get going. That's where we would have seen the intro to Lord Baffert's Manor, but my cinematics aren't working. That said, the video should be separately uploaded into the playlist. Let's peek at our objectives. We are to sneak into Lord Bafford's manor and case the place. The well house in back is our best bet if we can get the key from the guard. Blackjacking or pickpocketing him would be quietest. We need to find Lord Bafford's prized jeweled scepter and redistribute it to ourselves. We must try to do it without causing too much commotion. In addition to pinching the scepter, we are to steal 700 worth of valuables while we're in the manor. We're not to kill anyone while we do the job. No servants, no guards, no pets, no one. And once we've achieved our other objectives, we're to get out of the manor house and back to the city streets. Now I won't be making any purchases. It is possible to find all the loot and do so in compliance with the supreme ghost rules according to the IDOS forum. It's going to be difficult, it's going to take a lot of saves and reloads, you're going to see the entire process, I'm going to do it, I don't care how long it takes. Play mission. <laughs> Now here, in order to avoid a level 1 alert from the guards, we need to cross the door while they're having their conversation, and then, because I always like to listen to the guards, we will finish listening to them from the other side of the door. Let's begin. Hey, I'm going to the bear pits tomorrow. You want to come with? <laughs> Couldn't pay me enough. What? You soft belly. Bears have got these new muzzles with underslung cheek spikes. Last time I was there, there was a real eye gouge. <laughs> nah, nah. It makes me sick. When I was a kid. Huh. Surprised you're even in this job. Oh, the blood it just turns my poor tummy. Shut up, you taffer. You want blood? You should have been there years ago. Tell you, the bears then, they were something to see. Those bears, they didn't need no cheek spikes and razor collars and paw hooks and all that knifery you strips to them now. No paw hooks? What'd they do? Just bump into each other? Huh. Nah. The bears back then, they had claws as long as your finger. And wicked teeth! Bears? You're toughing me. They look pretty mangy harmless. As long as they're not wearing harness. That's why I can't stand the pits now. <coughs> you don't know what you missed. They just don't make bears like they used to. Whoa! Killer bears. Would have liked to see that. <laughs> Now the next step is to get past the servant who's patrolling out in the streets. Although he doesn't care that we're out here, we still need to avoid being seen. Just those are the rules, so we will find a convenient shadow and allow him to walk past us.
Now's as good a time as any for us to look at the map. It's always good to do. Obviously, if you're trying to supreme ghost missions and find all of the loot, you're probably already familiar with the level, but I like to do it anyway. I like to see the detail work that Looking Glass, God rest their souls, put into these games. This is by far the most detailed and annotated map you'll receive for any level in the game. Our fence, Cuddy, kindly told us to watch out for interior patrols. He's done a very good job casing the front entrance, not so much the rest of the mansion, but he has told us we need to sneak in through the well house, which gets us into the basement, and that the scepter is in the throne room on the second floor. He's also left us an arrow cache to pick up en route, which we're going to see in a minute, but when you're playing Supreme Ghost style, the idea is to leave everything exactly as you found it, except for the loot you pick up. To me, that includes arrows, particularly since also, in Supreme Ghost mode, you're not allowed to use any water or moss arrows or any inventory items or any equipment anyway. So we're going to leave Cuddy's arrow cache where it is. You see the arrow cache here. Our next obstacle if you can call it that, because he still isn't hostile to us, is another guard out patrolling in the streets. We get around him by going down into the sewers. Make sure to close the manhole behind us. No one can hear us down here. We can make as much noise as we want. A couple of things to note. First, get this necklace, worth 200 loot. Next, Supreme Ghost Mode requires us to leave everything exactly as it was. That includes the door and the gate in the closed and locked position. It is possible, I know, to get the door closed behind us and make a mad dash through the gate before it shuts completely. So that is what we're going to do. First, we need to get it open. Not that we're in any danger, but I quick save out of habit more than anything else. Then you want to use the lean key, lean around the door like that, shut it behind us. And as you can see, we were way too slow on that attempt. Let's try again. We had to abort that mid-attempt. We knew that wasn't going to happen. When I do manage to do this, I'll annotate the video and tell you at what point I make it through the gate so you can skip my floundering failed attempts, if you wish.
we can try some strategic jumping. I thought maybe it would do a complete cycle, but it didn't. There, it's done. Now when we pop up here, we'll be at the well house. We will be behind the drunk guard, and we will also be in view of the patroller, so we need to be careful. I have no idea what the timing is at this point, so I'm going to hope to get lucky and manage to emerge from the sewer and close it behind me out of sight of the patroller. So far, so good. There's our friend the patroller. If he'd seen us, he would have given us a house at Gelt and something like that, so we're good to go. Now let's begin by lifting the key from the drunkard, unlocking the well house. Now you may be wondering how we can lock the well house and return the key like we're required to do. The answer is to block the door and relock it. Now when we click the door, it'll swing open, but it's still locked. Strange, I know. Now we will drop the key right by the drunk guard. We will close the door behind us. Everything is as it was. It's as though the drunkard just dropped his key on the ground and we'll enter the basement. By the way, blocking the door as I locked it was the first place that I needed Clotremus' help to figure out how to Supreme Ghost, so my thanks to him on how to do that. Now, we have the basement cave with the spiders. This is the second major area in which I had to consult Clotremus' Supreme Ghost website to figure out how to get through. What the, we need to do is to get a couple of crates from the main basement, so I'm going to go do that. Inside at last. We're going to need two crates and we'll have to carry them into the cave one at a time. I have a little trouble avoiding at least getting a chitter from the spiders when I emerge from the water, so I'm going to make a save before I make the dive just in case. I have just as much trouble slipping back into the water without making enough noise to get a chitter, so let's do our best. Perfect.
I could go into the details and explain the difference between regular play, ghost mode, supreme ghost mode, but the link in the video description to the page on the IDOS forums does that for me. The consultations I've done have been, number one, to verify which modes are possible, because it's not always possible to Supreme Ghost Emission, or to Perfect Supreme Ghost Emission, for that matter even to Ghost Emission. There are a few that you just can't. What I'm going to do on this playthrough is complete whatever the hardest possible iteration is within the rules. There are going to be lots of boring segments with a lot of saving and reloading involving not making any alerts at all, involving putting things back where I found them. What I will use annotations for, as many other videos do, is if you want to skip over the boring parts, like when I was fiddling around with the gate, when I'm about to fiddle around with these crates, I will let you know when I succeed and let you skip forward to that part in the video. Let's do a quick save here. Now the way to get by these spiders without triggering any kind of alert is to set two crates down. And somehow, being above their line of sight allows us to sneak forward just enough to open the chest and take the ring without even getting a chitter from these spiders. Now in case... I make a quick save in a bad spot. I'm gonna do a real save right here. Now, creep very slowly, staying against the wall. As we remain on top of the crates. It's possible that I set these a little too far back. Yes, I mean did. You heard the spiders get angry at me. So, let's retry this. Let's set this crate a little farther forward. Put the other crate right next to it. Now, you may have already noticed an odd little quirk with the spiders. He's, his face is staring at me and he's not seeing me. Until they're alerted, their vision cones are inverted and spiders actually see out of their butts. True story. No dice. I think I have the reverse problem here. I think they were set a little bit too far forward and I couldn't mount up onto the first crate. Don't ask me why the spiders don't notice the crates, but they don't. Stupid critters, I guess. That chitter is what we call a level 1 alert. It's where the spider indicates some awareness of us but hasn't begun to search. Spiders search with their feelers raised in the air, well, their front two legs, and in supreme ghost mode. And since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. In Supreme Ghost mode, even a first level alert is a bust. <gasps> Obviously a full alert is a bust as well. Something isn't quite right here. Let's do another reposition. Ah, 
so close and yet so far. Uh, since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. And there's the chitter. What we need to do... if we can, is eliminate that little gap between the crates that I'm falling into. Uh, and since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. Since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. And there it is. We've done it. Now we need to noiselessly return the crates to the position in which we found them. No chitters, thank goodness. And again, thank you to Clatrimus and his Supreme Ghosting website for showing me how to get that ring. I assumed that you couldn't even perfect ghost the mission, let alone perfect Supreme Ghost the mission, until he discovered this method with the crates. This portion requires a bit of technical gimmickry, if you will, in order to succeed. The rest of the mission is really pretty easy, with the exception of the throne room. The throne room, when we get there, will rely heavily on luck and patience. But, really... This spider cave and the throne room are the two biggest obstacles, so one down, one to go. Go us. Make sure we stay silent. Still no chitters, so we're good to go. Even though I failed at staying silent. And with that, we're set. Let's do another real save. I've been thinking. The sir could really beef up security some. What do you mean? What's wrong with us? Well, we're fine. But I've been thinking we should watch the outsides more. That's stupid! 
people to worry about there on the inside. No, then you catch them before they get inside, you taffer. Oh! Even though I won't be picking them up, I will make a point of spotlighting where all of the inventory items you can acquire and use if you're not insane like me can be found. In this chest, there is a healing potion. I, of course, will leave it where it is. One issue I sometimes run into with this guard, I have seen him stop and give me room to walk around him, and I've seen him fail to do so. Most of the time I have room to get around him once he stops, and I think that's the way it's supposed to be. While I wait for him to get in position, I'll point out this room. We'll be in there later. We access it from the second floor. We can't get in from the basement. The rest of the basement has some loose shovels, gardening equipment, that sort of thing, but nothing of value apart from the healing potion. So. Now the guard stops here, and there's usually room to get around him. But it appears that this time there's not. <laughs> Who's there? Obviously, we need to get around him without any of that kind of first level alert or we're in trouble. So, let's be a little bit more careful, see if we can't creep and stay by the wall. squirt through. So far, so good. Hello? <clears throat> no dice there. Steady is the way to go. That chest contains one or two flash bombs. I think it might be two. Again, not picking them up. No use for them. Sir? <clears throat> and oh my goodness, what a lack of care was evident in that. Congratulations. You have made it through the basement as a supreme ghost and have found all the loot so far. Let's keep going. But I believe that's an accomplishment worthy of a real save. Over here, you only want to open the leaning chest. It has some copper coins in it. This chest here just has a junk vase. Move past the sleeper. No problem there. Now in this room here, these two have a conversation that I never managed to hear sneaking through the basement. The conversation file exists in game. I don't know when they say it, but I'm never close enough to hear it. If anyone has heard the conversation and knows what they say, I would love it if you'd post it in the comments. 
now we're going to head into the kitchen. Two things I want to do here. First, grab the vase, nice and easy. And second, wherever possible, I am going to read all the documents, especially the ones that are posted to the wall and don't get picked up like this one. Cedric, please speak to Cook about last night's dinner. While technically the menu conformed to my instructions, I suspect that the lamb was somewhat older than this spring's, and I am in no way fooled by his practice of warming the salad to disguise wilting. If Cook is incapable of finding adequate ingredients, he can be replaced, and if he offers those same excuses about the stone market shortages, Please remind him that the grocery budget is a good 50% above last year's figures, and even he should be able to procure adequate victuals at those prices. Lord Bafford. So Lord Bafford's a jerk to his house staff. No surprise there. There's plenty of food in here. Food is useless in this game. In Thief 2, it has a 1 in 3 chance of restoring 1 point of health, but it's useless in Thief, Dark Project, and Gold. And even if it wasn't useless, we wouldn't be picking it up on this run. Ever onward. Now we get into the more heavily patrolled areas of the house. This part still isn't very hard, though. You don't have to rely on luck here. You can listen at the door and wait until you hear the guard walking on the carpet and then walking away. You can hear him well enough through the door to know whether or not he's here. He's nowhere nearby right now, but I don't feel like opening the door on the off chance that he's walking towards me and will see me from the other side of the room. I'm going to err on the side of caution, even though I am saving and loading for you to see, and wait until I hear him walking away before I slip into the room behind him. In addition to him, there's another guard that patrols the stone hallway back out there, but I don't think he's anywhere nearby right now. To all staff, the sir will be taking his dinner and evening out tonight, so domestics and manservants have the ha night free. Housekeep is still expected to finish the quarters and the general polish. The house guard is not to find this an opportunity to shirk, and lapses will be brought up with the sir, Cedric. The other guard will eventually come out of that door. What you saw back there, by the way, spotlighted, was one of the bigger glitches in this game, and that's they f did a poor job vertically distinguishing sounds, so a guard on the second floor sounded like he was in the same room as us. In this room, there's a golden vase we need, and up these stairs on the table, there is another one. No one patrols into either of these rooms. So this is a pretty safe area. You hear those footsteps on the carpet. I'm going to shoot into this room on the left. This is another room that no one comes into. There's a purple goblet we need in here. And you just heard a door close, which means a guard has walked into this stone hallway. I'm going to give him time to turn away from us. You can see him there. All we want at the moment is to get out of that room and back into this shadow. Eventually, the guard will walk back into the room across from us. 
and when he does, we'll follow him. For the curious, that is the servant that we saw out in the streets at the beginning of the mission. very careful crossing little tile strips like the ones at either end of this room. There are two pieces of loot in this art gallery, a plate and a vase worth 50 each. That's 720 loot, which puts us above our requirement, as you may have noticed. In this mission, of course, it's possible to get all of the loot within the Supreme Ghost rules, and that's what we're going to do. Eventually, we will hit missions where that's not possible, and for this playthrough, in a significant departure from my usual priorities, I intend to sneak and leave some loot untouched if I can't get to it without alerting someone and putting them in search mode. I got heavily criticized for calling my first playlist ghosting, and in fact, I was not ghosting. I was, in some cases, actively letting guards see me and triggering search modes in order to move them away from their posts, and that isn't ghosting. This time, we will truly remain unseen and unheard. With him on his way over there, we've got a great deal of time to sneak around in here, and the only threat we have to deal with is the servant from earlier. In this room, there's a stack of silver coins. And then we need to get up these stairs, and we'll make another save in this shadow. This room has a piece of loot of its own, the wine bottle I just got out of the chest, worth another 50. And this is our route upstairs, that staircase right there. There is a guard who walks all the way down that staircase into this room and then patrols back up. So we're going to wait until he shows up and follow him upstairs to get to the second floor. Throughout the playthrough, you'll sometimes hear me refer to a perfect shadow. We're in a perfect shadow right now, which is a place where not only is the light gem completely dark, but a guard cannot see you if you hold still. He could walk straight into you, bump you face to face, and still not notice you. There are other dark shadows that aren't perfect, where if a guard bumps you, he will most definitely detect you. Wherever possible, you want to do your saving, inside perfect shadows like this one. Now let's follow this guy upstairs. By far, the most tedious thing about successfully sneaking through this game is silently crossing tile floors. Just be careful take baby steps, and it should never be that bad. Now, we're going to start our sweep of the second floor by going that way, so we're going to wait for him to pass us, head down into the other room again. This is also a perfect shadow.
I've had it pointed out to me in the first playthrough that there's a secret passage to the throne room in the garden. That's true, but accessing it requires you to slash open a banner, and there's no property damage allowed in ghost mode, so we can't use that. That was a very near miss. We're lucky he didn't react to our presence. Up these stairs, open this chest to find a stack of silver coins. Now, I've never found a good way to gauge where this guy is. I can't hear him because of directional audio problems, so I usually just wait until I see the tip of his sword, duck upstairs, count to three, and then rush out the door to the shadow. One, two, three. You can hear a lot of footsteps, but you're pretty safe in this hallway, especially if you're in one of the shadows. The next room is a mirror image of the other one, so much so that the piece of loot is exactly the same. A stack of silver coins gained from one chest upstairs. We also have the same problem. Until you're looking at the doorway, it's almost impossible to gauge where the guard actually is. There's the loot. We're gonna use the same tactic here. Wait till we see him, count to three, run downstairs. One, two, three. We're going to follow another guard down this hallway. We're going to wait until we see him at the end of his patrol route. He'll come into our field of view. <clears throat> I know I'm hardly alone among gamers in this, but I have an insane addiction to caffeine. Between comments, I'm sipping at a double caffeine rockstar energy drink right now, the kind with 250 milligrams of caffeine in it. I drank one of those already today, plus two 20 ounces of Pepsi Max. I'm on my second one. It's horrible what law school has done to me. Follow him to the next shadow. That room is where we got a vase earlier, in case you're wondering. Again, erring on the side of caution, we're going to wait until he's headed that way and slip out behind him to get to the next room. Speaking of law school, if any of you are thinking of going, let me give you a good little bit of advice. Don't! If you expect me to elaborate, I might do it later. I'm not going to do it now. Just don't go. They are lying to you about their employment numbers. They are lying. This room is safe with its lovely carpeted floor and the fact that no one ever patrols in here. Now, probably the hardest bit of loot to find in this mission is this tiny ring on the shelf next to this candle. With that in hand, we get to the hard part. Well, not, not yet. We're crossing a tile strip here, so we have to be careful. This is the best corner to hide in to deal with these two. There are two guards patrolling a symmetrical loop, and their patrols are almost mirror images, mirror images of each other. 
but they each have a red key we need to pickpocket. My first step is to camp here and get both red keys. There are a total of four rooms we need to search here. There is the dining room through that door. There's the throne room behind us, the bedroom behind us, and the passage to the basement room, which is across the bathroom, which we'll sneak into. I'm going to do the dining room first, then I'm going to sneak through the bathroom to go to the basement, then I'm going to tackle the throne room, which is going to require lots of saving and loading and a great deal of luck to get through, and then finally, the bedroom, the library, and the exit. Here's the other key. Now immediately we can go ahead and drop one of these back on the patrol route, so let's do that now. And only hold on to one. And let's head into the dining room. The dining room only has two pieces of loot, two bottles of wine, right over here. You can listen until it sounds like he's past the door, and then head on through. Go ahead and head into the bathroom. We barely did that fast enough, but we did. We got some hard cover between us and the other guard before he could see anything. I don't know how many of you ever watched the game review series Zero Punctuation from the Escapist magazine. If you don't, it's hilarious and you should go check it out, and you should particularly check out their review of Thief. They do point out that Garrett seems so contemptuous of all the guards that he feels the need to wear tap shoes to every single one of his jobs. When you hear him take a step on the tile floor, that certainly seems to be the case. Once you make it into this basement passage, there's nothing to worry about. Make as much noise as we want. Let's even jump up and down a little, just because we can. Now in here... The only thing we need is a wine bottle out of the chest. There's a key on the wall that we don't need, and here we have a ledger. I'm not going to actually read all the numbers, but what we have are cash pits and interest payments from three different places, Sunny Fair, Dreck Boone, and Fenden. The parenthetical numbers are expenses. We're giving a cut of everything to someone named Ramirez. We've sent the girls on a shopping trip, and you can already notice here that Drekboon is bringing in significantly less money than the other two places. The same is true here, and we're also paying a debtor assist, whatever that means. Drekboon is bringing in even less than the last page. Here, a week later, we pay tokens to guards in every place. I assume that's to keep the law off of our backs, but I don't know that for sure and Drekboon is even smaller, and Bafford has noticed. What the hell is going on with Drekboon? Even if Ginny's grafting, he damn well ought to be more subtle than this. If it's not turned around in another week, toss it up to Ramirez's breach. So, there you have it. Yes, we came all the way down here just for that wine bottle. And to discover that Lord Bafford is involved in some sort of criminal enterprise.
Now we go all the way back upstairs, sneak back through the bathroom, and then the fun really starts. Gonna wait until we see a guard's back here. As always, err on the side of caution. Whenever you're going to be crossing tile, it's always a grand idea to make liberal use of the quick save button. One foul up, and they will be on you like a hobo on a ham sandwich, to borrow one of my mother's expressions. You might be able to detect it in my voice, and you might not. Both of my parents are very, very southern, with the twangy accent and everything. I love them for it. Some people don't. I do say y'all, and I'm told that sometimes I have traces of the accent too. If I do, I hope you find it charming. We should be good to get across this hallway now. When you get to this little carpeted patch, I like to jump down to the other carpet. As long as we hide on this side, we're safe from being seen by the guards. Get our red key out to unlock the door. Slip in. As you can see, he doesn't notice that the door is open. Now, the throne room. Getting to this point is worth another real save. What we have here is a pretty dire need for a lot of luck and the need to be patient. Let me explain why. The room is obviously very well lit. That guard is stationary there, and he just occasionally makes little turns like that. The issue is that he makes those turns randomly. He can stay Someone behind me. looking one direction for a long time or he can immediately turn. You never really know what he's going to do. The only advantage is that for some reason, let's look at our compass here, he never seems to face north. As you can see, right now he's facing west. He'll turn and face east into the throne room, and he'll turn and face south, but I have never seen him face north. So we're going to cross to that side of the room and get into the shadow in the center. That's our first move. Of course, we have to wait until he looks into the throne room long enough for us to do that. If you want to skip this part, I will let you know when it's over in the annotations. The first thing I'm going to do the annotation will jump you to where I get into the throne room and take the scepter. The only thing you'll miss is that I am going to lift his key on the way to doing that. There's an easier way to do this. Oh, yeah! Way to go, Mr. Smarty Pants! Now we can move when he's turned to the south. 
Holy crap, I'm an idiot. This still isn't easy, but it's a lot easier. The first step is... Something move there. Oh. <coughs> Maybe we do need to wait for him to face the throne room anyway. <coughs> like I said, this is completely random and it's a huge pain in the butt. I'd just like to have credit for all the pickpockets, which is why I'm going to nab his key and then drop it back in the same room. Really, we don't need it. In fact, maybe I'll leave the key alone. Well, no. I want credit for the pickpockets. I'll grab his key, I'll drop it on the carpet. It's plausible enough, I think. If this seems like fun to you, wait until we try to get out of the room. Getting out of the throne room is much harder than getting in. There we go. Let's hope he stays that way for a little while. You see now he's facing the main room, but he still didn't even <coughs> flag an alert level one. Now what we want him to do is face south, and then we can get up behind him, get his key, and <coughs> slip into the throne room. What's probably obvious to you is that we need him to face south for a good long while in order to pull that off. Hopefully he will comply. <coughs> <laughs> it's a throne room. How pretentious can you get? Pretty pretentious. So we've made it into the throne room. Let's grab the scepter. Here we go. Let's save. Let's do a real save. The next thing I'm going to do is drop the key over in a plausible space. Just watch the tip of his sword to see when he turns. And we're going to get out the same way we came in. We're going to wait for him to face south and get to the center shadow. And then we're going to wait for him to face into the throne room and slip back out the way we came in. And we should be home free as soon as he turns to the throne room. Yes! That went astonishingly smoothly. Now we need to lock this door behind us. And we need to get back up here. We can go ahead and drop the other red key right now on their patrol route. And next, we're going to loot the bedroom. The bedroom has a good bit of loot in it. It's got four silver coin stacks here, and a tiara. Wait until we hear him, you know, reasonably far away from us. Oh, 
across. Head into the library. I wonder if he reads them or if it's just for show. Three things in here. First, a papyrus. Milordy Bafford, speaks he sell to Ginny, did you bid? Dret boon, the hammer hearts have been afoot, a skulk, a ferreting about, grabbing many a one to vanish in the cold stone down below their forgy chain cells. Took they your dealer Tarkis in their clutches night past, and two patrons as well, named of the Salin Rien, scooped up as they left. And these not the first, cries Ginny. Little wonder, then, if Dret boon grows sparse come these days. Of course, the lack of blame to one hand, but I gave Ginny a firm understandsy, blood and gloom and the whole book, so he'll be learning him and all he can about how to turn the hammers off him, never you fear. About your Victoria, nothing yet. Walk she an inch above the ground, for all the dirt of her footprints have I found. Dominic. We'll put that back. We'll read this little book. Lord Bafford, a recent delivery of antiquities from Bone contains several items which we felt might be of interest to you. Descriptions follow, but you are welcome to drop by our shop to examine them or our other goods in person. An ornamental scepter, three feet in length. The body of the stave is weirwood, carved in the star and dot pattern. Six inches of the ferrule and five inches of the grip are bound with burnished copper overlaid by an ink and glaze cracker varnish. The crowning feature of this magnificent piece, however, is the six-inch teardrop-cut cloudstone, one of the finest of its type we have seen. A treasure box of two feet by three feet of silver birch wood. The lid is of inlaid tear line and onyx in a maze pattern carved into the wood. The feet are lion paws, each clutching a crystal globe. The inside of the box contains two principal compartments, one with glass shelves and one without. Beneath the compartments is a lockable two-inch false bottom for your most valuable treasures, Grimworth and Deperin fine antiquities and precious relics. And last, most important, is the last piece of loot, another necklace. Total 1429. Now all it remains is to get out. This happens to him a lot if you're in the mission long enough, he gets stuck to the wall like that. He may not be stuck, in which case you can just sneak past him through that lovely perfect shadow. Either way, the hard part is definitely over once you have the scepter. All that remains now is to escape. Again, in the interest of erring on the side of caution, I'm going to wait until I see this guard. I apologize if you hear me sniffling. I do have a bit of a cold I'm fighting off. I'm at the tail end of it, but I might be making some cold-related noise, and for that I apologize. You can hear the guard above us stuck, walking in the same spot. Just like Sisyphus, poor bastard. There's a guard! <clears throat> Wait until he turns his back, then we can follow him. Now no one can see us here. The very last bit, much like the issue we had in the sewers, is managing to leave this gate shut behind us and get out. But, not that bad. And we're done. So, let's take a look at the stats. That took us 53 minutes and 8 seconds. We found all the loot. We picked all the pockets. No backstabs, no knockouts, no damage dealt or taken, no healing taken, no body, and nothing was killed. More importantly, we found all the loot, and we did so in full compliance with the IDOS Forum rules for supreme ghosting. Congratulations to us. The ability to perfect supreme ghost a mission is pretty rare, but this is one of the ones we can do it. 
For the final time, I'd like to thank Cletremus for his methods of number one, locking the well house while returning the key, and number two, using the crates to get the ring from the spider cave. Without his website, I would not have been able to do those things. So thanks to him, thanks to all of you for watching, and I will see you later in Crags Cleft Prison. Let's make a save here at the end of the mission, and this is where I'll join you. Thank you. Bye-bye.